Good day my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Alberto has struck over Mexico, they are making landfall there, killing at least four. Now, a flood advisory is still in effect here for another day. Even as the water has receded, Leicester, tremendously, and yet, look at all that remains here on the street it spans the entire area, covering properties on both sides, as those who live here are just waiting. With Surfside Beach, Texas, still soaked from the far-reaching impact of tropical storm Alberta, a man records from his truck as a tornado passes. In a world where nature's fury collides with mystical enigmas, devastating tornadoes and thunderstorms have mercilessly swept across communities, claiming innumerable lives. Yet, within the ruins, murmurs emerge. The relentless and lethal storms have decimated the United States, igniting widespread conjecture and impassioned discourse. Many perceive these unprecedented calamities as potent omens, perhaps heralding the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Are these catastrophic storms mere weather events, or do they signify something far deeper? Before delving into the prophecies in the Bible and scientific investigations, please hit the like button and subscribe below to support our channel and receive notifications about more interesting and engaging videos in the future. In a dramatic and devastating turn of events, deadly storms and twisters have swept across the central United States, leaving a profound impact on multiple states and claiming numerous lives. This latest outbreak of severe weather, characterized by powerful tornadoes and intense thunderstorms, has wreaked havoc from Texas to Ohio, causing widespread destruction and displacing thousands. At least 15 people have been confirmed dead as waves of tornadoes swept through multiple states, leaving a trail of destruction and despair in their wake. The deadly storms, part of a larger severe weather system, devastated communities, uprooted lives, and caused widespread damage to infrastructure. The National Weather Service had issued numerous tornado warnings, yet the ferocity and scale of the tornadoes caught many by surprise. Small towns bore the brunt of the damage, with entire neighborhoods reduced to rubble and emergency services stretched to their limits as they struggled to respond to the widespread destruction. In Oklahoma, where some of the most severe tornadoes struck, the conversation has been particularly intense. Churches and religious communities have gathered in prayer, seeking solace and understanding amidst the chaos. Many pastors and religious leaders have taken to their pulpits and social media platforms to address the question head-on, offering interpretations that range from the storms being a test of faith to warnings of moral decline. Reverend John Michaels of a prominent Oklahoma City church, for instance, preached that these events are a wake-up call from God, urging people to return to more righteous living. His congregation, like many others, is torn between fear and faith grappling with the notion that their suffering might hold a deeper spiritual significance. Further south, in Texas, the response has been similarly introspective. Communities have come together, seeking comfort and answers in the face of such overwhelming tragedy. Religious leaders have emphasized the importance of unity and resilience, encouraging their congregations to find strength in their faith as they rebuild their lives and support one another. This cataclysmic series of storms has not only left a trail of physical destruction, but has also sparked a profound spiritual reckoning. Individuals and communities across the affected region search for meaning in the midst of their suffering. As we continue to follow this story, we aim to explore the deeper implications of these events and their potential to reshape our understanding of faith, prophecy, and the human experience. Communities devastated by the storms have turned to their religious traditions for comfort and answers. In rural areas, where churches often serve as the heart of community life, the destruction has prompted a surge in religious gatherings and prayer meetings. Pastor Sarah Thompson, from a small town near Dallas, described the overwhelming sense of loss and desperation among her parishioners. She emphasized that while some see the storms as divine retribution, Others view them as an opportunity for renewal and repentance. 
This dichotomy reflects a broader national conversation about the meaning and purpose of suffering, particularly in the context of natural disasters. In Missouri, the state capital of Jefferson City faced a devastating tornado that struck the heart of the city, damaging not only homes, but also historical and religious landmarks. The destruction of these sites has led to poignant reflections among the faithful. Some see the damage to their places of worship as a profound sign a divine reminder of the fragility of human constructs in the face of divine will. Father James, whose historic church was heavily damaged, spoke to his congregation about the importance of faith in times of trial. He pointed to the resilience of the community as a testament to their enduring spirit and divine purpose, suggesting that the rebuilding efforts could strengthen their faith and unity. Meanwhile, in Kansas, where tornadoes ravaged both urban and rural areas, theological interpretations of the storms have varied widely. Some residents, deeply rooted in evangelical tradition, have framed the disasters within an ecological context viewing them as harbingers of the apocalypse. This perspective is often fueled by a literal interpretation of biblical prophecies, particularly those found in the book of Revelation. In contrast, other religious leaders advocate a more metaphorical understanding, emphasizing themes of renewal and divine testing rather than imminent end times. This theological diversity highlights the complex interplay between faith, interpretation, and disaster as communities seek to make sense of their experiences through the lens of their beliefs. The notion that these storms might be a sign from God or a prelude to the end times is a powerful and for many, comforting framework through which to understand their suffering. It provides a narrative that situates personal and communal loss within a larger cosmic story, offering a sense of purpose and direction. However, this interpretation also raises complex theological and ethical questions. If these storms are indeed a message from God, what is the nature of that message? Is it one of judgment, warning, or perhaps an invitation to deeper faith and communal solidarity? In the broader context of climate change and environmental degradation, some religious leaders have begun to incorporate these themes into their interpretations. They suggest that the increasing frequency and severity of such storms may be a divine response to humanity's stewardship of the earth. Reverend Lisa Graham, an environmental advocate in Arkansas, argues that these natural disasters should prompt urgent reflection on our relationship with the planet. She suggests that the storms are not just random acts of nature, but could be seen as a wake-up call to address the environmental crisis facing the world today. As communities continue to rebuild and recover, the conversations around these events are likely to evolve. The interplay between faith, suffering, and the natural world remains a deeply personal and communal journey. It is a journey that invites individuals to reflect on their beliefs, responsibilities, and hopes for the future. In this process, the resilience and unity of the affected community stand as a testament to the enduring human spirit and the search for meaning in the face of unimaginable tragedy. This perspective aligns with a growing environmental theology that sees care for creation as a moral and spiritual imperative. By framing the storms within this context, religious communities can engage with contemporary issues of climate change and environmental justice. In a world increasingly fraught with turmoil, spiritual warfare, and escalating conflicts, the concept of the end times has gained renewed relevance and urgency for believers. Preparing for these prophesied events is crucial, and the teachings of Jesus Christ provide a profound foundation for navigating the anticipated trials and tribulations. Relying on Jesus Christ is not merely about seeking refuge in his teachings, but about embracing a transformative faith that equips individuals with strength, hope, and resilience. This preparation involves a deep personal relationship with Christ, adherence to his teachings, and an understanding of celestial signs that serve as symbols of hope amidst the chaos. Jesus Christ's teachings offer a roadmap for spiritual preparedness in the face of impending end times. Central to his message, 
is the call for unwavering faith and vigilance. In the Gospels, Jesus frequently urges his followers to remain watchful and ready for his return, emphasizing the unpredictability of the timing Matthew 24 36 44. This exhortation is a call to live righteously, rooted in his commandments of love, compassion, and service. By embodying these virtues, believers fortify their spirits against the deceptions and tribulations that characterize spiritual warfare. This preparation is not passive. It requires active engagement in spiritual disciplines, such as prayer, study of the scriptures, and fellowship with other believers, which collectively strengthen one's faith and discernment. Spiritual warfare, as depicted in the New Testament, involves a constant battle against the forces of darkness that seek to undermine faith and sow discord. The Apostle Paul, in his letters, describes the armor of God as essential for this battle. This metaphorical armor includes truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God elements grounded in a relationship with Jesus Christ. By donning this armor, believers are equipped to withstand the spiritual attacks expected to intensify as the end times approach. Reliance on Christ provides the strength and courage needed to face these adversities, knowing that victory is assured through him. In addition to spiritual fortification, understanding the significance of celestial signs is an important aspect of preparing for the end times. Throughout the Bible, celestial events have been used by God to communicate with humanity. The star that guided the Magi to the birthplace of Jesus is one such example symbolizing divine intervention and guidance. In the context of the end times, Jesus himself refers to signs in the heavens that will herald his return. These signs serve as reminders of God's sovereign control over the cosmos and his ongoing communication with his creation. Rather than inciting fear, these celestial phenomena should be viewed as symbols of hope, affirming that God's plan is unfolding as foretold. The escalating battles and tribulations expected to mark the end times can be daunting, but they also provide opportunities for the demonstration of unwavering faith and divine intervention. The book of Revelation, with its vivid imagery of cosmic battles and ultimate triumph, offers a profound message of hope. It assures believers that, despite the intensity of the trials, Christ's victory over evil is certain. This eschatological vision encourages believers to persevere, holding fast, as the world grapples with the increasing frequency and severity of natural disasters. This intertwining of environmental theology and eschatological preparation provides a comprehensive framework for understanding and responding to these events. It calls on believers to not only prepare spiritually for the prophesied end times, but also to take actionable steps in caring for the earth, thus embodying the teachings of Jesus Christ in a tangible and impactful way. In this manner, faith, environmental stewardship, and eschatological readiness come together, guiding communities through both present challenges and future uncertainties with hope and resilience. The celestial signs accompanying these events are not merely harbingers of doom, but affirmations of God's imminent intervention and the ultimate restoration of his kingdom. In practical terms, preparing for the end times involves cultivating a lifestyle that reflects the teachings of Jesus Christ. This includes fostering a heart of compassion, engaging in acts of service, and maintaining a steadfast commitment to prayer and worship. The parable of the wise and foolish virgins underscores the importance of readiness and vigilance, illustrating that spiritual preparedness is an ongoing process rather than a one-time event. By living in accordance with Christ's teachings, Believers can ensure they are spiritually equipped to face the trials ahead. Furthermore, reliance on Jesus Christ provides an anchor of hope that transcends the fear and uncertainty associated with the end times. His promise to be with his followers always, to the very end of the age, was assurance that believers are never alone in their struggles. This divine companionship is a source of comfort and strength enabling believers to navigate the challenges of the end times with confidence and hope. The presence of Christ in the lives of believers 
is a testament to his enduring faithfulness and love, which remains steadfast even in the face of escalating conflicts. This holistic approach to preparing for the end times rooted in the teachings of Jesus Christ, awareness of celestial science, and a commitment to environmental stewardship provides a robust framework for believers. It encourages them to live with purpose, resilience, and hope, trusting in God's ultimate plan and their role within it. As communities continue to recover and rebuild from devastation, this integrated perspective can inspire a collective movement toward a more compassionate, faithful, and sustainable future. The role of community and fellowship is also crucial in preparing for the end times. The early Christian communities, as depicted in the Acts of the Apostles, exemplify the power of community support and shared faith in times of persecution and trial. These communities found strength in unity, prayer, and mutual support. Modern believers can draw inspiration from this model, recognizing the importance of building and sustaining faith communities that provide spiritual nourishment and support. Engaging in regular worship, Bible study, and communal prayer strengthens collective faith and fortifies individuals against the spiritual challenges that lie ahead. Moreover, understanding celestial signs as symbols of hope requires a discerning and informed faith. This involves a careful study of biblical prophecies and an awareness of their fulfillment in contemporary events. While it is important to avoid speculative interpretations, a grounded understanding of these signs can provide reassurance and perspective. Recognizing that celestial events are part of God's divine narrative helps believers maintain a sense of hope and expectation, even as they navigate the uncertainties of the end times. As the Great Tribulation draws near, preparing for the end times by relying on Jesus Christ and understanding the significance of the seven trumpets in Revelation becomes paramount for believers. The book of Revelation, with its vivid and symbolic imagery, outlines a sequence of divine judgments that will unfold in the last days. Among these, the seven trumpets play a crucial role, heralding specific events that signify the escalating severity of the tribulations to come. Relying on Jesus Christ during these tumultuous times involves deepening one's faith, fostering spiritual resilience, and understanding the profound implications of these apocalyptic signs. The seven trumpets in Revelation chapters 8 to 11 rep represent a series of catastrophic events that serve as divine judgments upon a world that has turned away from God. These trumpets, sounded by angels, signal various calamities that progressively intensify in their impact. For believers, these events are not merely harbingers of doom but calls to steadfast faith and repentance. The fifth and sixth trumpets, in particular, highlight the profound spiritual and physical suffering that will befall humanity, underscoring the necessity of relying on Jesus Christ for strength and salvation. The fifth trumpet, described in Revelation 9:12, heralds the release of a fallen star, interpreted as Satan, who unleashes a horde of demonic locusts upon the earth. These locusts, with the power to torment those who do not bear the seal of God, symbolize intense spiritual and psychological anguish. Their torment is likened to the sting of a scorpion, causing excruciating pain, but not death. This torment lasts for five months, a period marked by immense suffering for those who have turned away from God. The imagery of this plague underscores the severity of divine judgment and the consequences of spiritual rebellion. For believers, this serves as a stark reminder of the importance of remaining faithful and seeking protection under God's seal. Relying on Jesus Christ during this period involves embracing his teachings, seeking his guidance, and finding solace in his promises of redemption and protection. The sixth trumpet, found in Revelation 9:13-21 unleashes four angels bound at the Euphrates River who lead a massive army of 200 million. This army is tasked with killing one-third of the Earth's population, resulting in unprecedented human suffering and death. The devastation wrought by this army highlights the physical consequences of divine judgment and the pervasive nature of human defiance against God. 
Despite the catastrophic loss of life, Revelation notes that the survivors still do not repent of their sins, underscoring the hardened state of human hearts and the persistence of rebellion. These apocalyptic visions, while daunting, also serve as calls to faith and repentance. They remind believers of the urgent need to align their lives with God's will and to seek His protection and guidance. By fostering a deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ and adhering to His teachings, believers can find the strength and resilience needed to endure the trials of the end times. The ultimate promise of revelation is one of hope and victory, the assurance that Christ will triumph over evil and establish his eternal kingdom. This eschatological vision encourages believers to persevere, holding fast to their faith in Jesus Christ and looking forward with hope to the fulfillment of God's divine plan. Moreover, the significance of the seven trumpets extends beyond their immediate judgments to their role in the larger narrative of divine redemption the book of Revelation culminates in the establishment of God's eternal kingdom, where suffering and death are no more. The trumpets, with their harrowing events, are steps in this divine plan leading to the ultimate renewal and restoration of creation. For believers, this eschatological perspective provides a framework for understanding the purpose and meaning of their trials, encouraging them to view their suffering in the light of God's redemptive plan fostering a sense of hope and perseverance. Preparing for the end times involves cultivating a life of spiritual discipline and readiness. This includes regular prayer, meditation on scripture, and active participation in a faith community. These practices help to strengthen one's relationship with Jesus Christ, providing the spiritual nourishment necessary to withstand the tribulations to come.